And we're live. We are, we're live. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to our regular Sunday live hangout. Yeah, we've got a lot of people chatting in there. Um, I was just having a quick look, trying to see who was first in, let's scroll down. Lucy was first in today, Lucy. so hi Lucy. Hi Lucy. Do you want to do some hellos? Yep, yeah, and um, we've got Maria, uh, Tactical Bite, uh, Beak Nuke, Southwest Sellers, Stephen, Jason, Lisa, Twin Red Dragons, Mad Stacks, um, Ruth, is that Sid Kent? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. CYB. Um, Paul, Kevin, Chicago Crown Hustler, Alistair, uh, Yorkshire Reseller, Phoebe, Charlotte, and yeah, hi everyone. Yes, hello. Thanks welcome, for us. welcome aboard. Thanks for popping in to say hello. Um, yeah, we've got, we don't have much of a haul today. I know a lot of you really enjoy seeing what random gear we pick up. We went out on the Saturday to do another clear out. We went selling. Yeah. We filled the car up with mostly clothing. Yeah, um, the rest of the uh, kids' clothes that um, haven't yeah. sold yet and some adult clothes that we found in the loft. <laughs> From ages ago that we're just not yeah. going to bother dealing with. So yeah. Well, yeah, I just thought I'd try and get a quick sale on it. If I can't sell all of it, then I'll just iron it and... Um, <laughs> you just don't want to iron it. <laughs> and list it. But yeah, I mean, it was a lot of stuff that... There was a lot of work involved, so I thought if I can get a quick sale at the boot sale, then I will. But, like, I was charging £2 a dress, which... I would pay in a charity shop to resell. And people were like, oh, no. But it was good. Some of it, it was really nice stuff. Oh, gorgeous stuff. And there's stuff with tags still. Yeah. And, yeah, I just couldn't believe it. People were like, uh, there was a lady who was going, oh, this is a lovely dress. Oh, lovely. How much is that? For two pounds. Oh, put it down, walked away. And I just couldn't believe it. But on the positive, we sold so much kids stuff. Yeah, we sold a lot of kids stuff, but then that was only 50p an item. So. Yeah, 50p an item, and then, and then of course people were getting massive piles of it and getting a deal out of us, which was fine. This is stock from when we had our bricks and mortar clothing store. None of it owes us any money. It was all stuff that was traded in through the shop. Yeah. And we've, we've, we've bundled up the good stuff and sold off individually some of the decent brands. This just needs to go. So that was fantastic. Yeah. Um, we didn't take masses of money. We must have done 100, 150, I guess. Yeah, it wasn't a huge amount this time. Um, but it was good and it was fun. We were there with my sister and her partner, Stuart, and, and they had loads of gear to clear out. I was buying stuff off them. Stuart bought some stuff off me. <laughs> it was a bit random. Um, so let me just dip in the chat before we start what we're going to talk about. Uh, more people popping in. Hello, we've got Graham, Pete's Retro Collectibles, Heather. Lisa says that you look good with your new haircut. You haven't had your haircut. I haven't had my haircut, no. <laughs> I don't know what's different. <laughs> we got, well, I, I didn't get that sunburn. I actually I had long sleeves on, but Andrea, wow, that's really showing up. Pink. I know, and it's really sore. We've got amazing <laughs> fan lines. Do you want to share? No, your... I don't. <laughs> it stops there and then you're white. I did that. I'll actually sit in the garden and like. Try and get the tops of my arms. It looks down. so pink. There. Oh, I know. It's not really as bad as that in real life. It's red around. This is what Tahir <laughs> says every time in his chat with his little pink. Yeah, but it's very <laughs> sore. I'm really stupid. I actually put some sun lotion in my back <laughs> and then I didn't put any on. But we did. The trouble was that it was really overcast as well, wasn't it, at some points? And then the heavens opened. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, and then the thunderstorm started. And we're literally just grabbing everything, grabbing all the clothes and sticking them in bags and trying to get it. We got absolutely drenched, didn't we? Yeah, uh, just um, like that, it went from sunshine to, to thunder and lightning right yeah. above us. And we just had to feel that the, the whole field just kind of vanished. That they, yeah. People were covering their stuff. We didn't have any cover, so we just had to fill the car. And we sat in the car and it was torrential for about five minutes. Yeah. And it went, everyone got out and started again. Yeah. <laughs> it was really random, was but yeah, and I, I've got to do a quick shout, I, shout out again to Richard, who was there, a guy that I bump into quite a lot, who kindly, I don't know if he picked it up on the day, did he, did he pick this I up there? I think he did, I don't know, I he, had that impression. He found a Depeche Mode, uh, it's the Exciter Tour, I believe, yeah, 2001, night, one night in Paris, I don't actually have this, 
I have seen it, but I don't actually own that. So thank you so much, Richard. That's so generous of you. So he got by and gave me that. And while I'm thinking about shout outs, I did mention this. Chelsea, who is quite often in the chat, so I don't know if he's in today, sent me, I did mention this in another video, yeah, but I didn't briefly. show what it was. He sent me this. It doesn't look much. It's a little Star Raider inlay. And I thought I'd just share what it is. Now I've got two of these games listed. One is boxed and one is loose. But I'm doing them both with these official Atari touchpads. And certain games use these touchpads and these little inlays just slip on top like that so you know what the buttons do and what commands the buttons give. So that's all it is and that's what Chelsea sent in the post to me last week. So thanks for that. I still haven't updated the listing. It's been at the top of my list of things to do for the past like seven days yeah. and haven't done it yet. So yeah, that's that. So that's shout outs dealt with. Um, oh, Chris is in there. Hi, Chris. Uh, John, Jenny, happy chap. I don't know who we shouted out in the chat yet. So well, <laughs> Malinky, lots of people. So we, although we were having a clear out day on Saturday, me being at a boot sale. Well, I barely saw him. <laughs> Let's put it that way. What do you mean barely saw I me? Didn't. You were off just constantly. Every now and then you come back to leave some stuff in the car and then you went again. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair enough. Um, I picked up loads of CDs. I mean, if I move the view, you might be able to see. I've spent the last couple of hours scanning them into Magpie and looking them up on Amazon and stuff. Um, that doesn't really do it justice because there's loads of stacks all around here stacked up that are going to Amazon, some that I'm doing on eBay. Uh, I've already done a box for Music Magpie. There's another box on the go for Music Magpie, a box for Ziffit, a box for We Buy Books. <laughs> um, I bought. I went up to a stall and I, I was rummaging. I found five or six CDs. They were 50 pence each, found five or six, and we had two big crates. I said, how much are your CDs? He went 50p. So I was just going to buy those few, and then I just, I sometimes just do this, just throw out how much for the lot. And he just threw back 20 pounds and there's 300 plus here so even if i just sent them all to magpie there's some decent profit there i yeah. found already i found about 20 or 30 that will go to amazon at between five and ten pounds each yeah. pretty much every neil diamond album you could ever imagine <laughs> yeah who, who's ever this was was a neil diamond fanatic and a celine dion fanatic yeah. it's just about every celine dion album in there which don't hold a lot of value, unfortunately. But these are all Neil Diamond. It must be nigh on everything he's ever released. Um, and some of those are really quite valuable. Um, I'll probably do a bundle and then sell some off individually at, at Amazon. But there's so much money in that. By the time I've creamed off the good stuff, sold a load on eBay, a load on Amazon, there's hundreds of pounds worth of that. And the rest will go off to the media buyers quick and easy love it and then another guy had these uh, little media boxes under his stall and I had a look it's I've never heard of this guy uh, Popek Goskul or something uh, and the album's called Monster means nothing to me I scanned it into Amazon uh, and it's on there I then scanned it into Magpie while I was there and Magpie giving about one pound 20 I think and zip it are giving about 140 anyway he's got it's less than I thought it was it's not 100 it's about 75 80 that amount three box falls uh, for a tenner so I've already sent zip it we're taking they take two of any title in one order I'm on my second zip it order so they've had two already and they'll get some more magpies having a few and then it does actually sell on Amazon and eBay. So I'm going to say perhaps a box to do on eBay and Amazon. Happy day. So yeah, I bought a ton of stuff. Bought some games and DVDs, but nothing interesting. Do you want to share the bits you got? Oh, I've literally got two things to share this week. <laughs> oh, is that it? I didn't yeah, realise. No. Um, well, I've been restrained this week. And I didn't actually buy anything at the boot sale whatsoever. I didn't even look. Because I knew that's because I left you on the stool. Well, that <laughs> and the fact that I thought, no, if I go looking, I'll just end up with loads of stuff, and I need to sell more through before I start buying more. But we did pop into a charity shop the other day, so I thought I'd share these. Um, 
don't know if anyone's heard of this. I hadn't heard of it myself before. It's mm. anthology. At first I picked up, I thought it was anthropology, which I know sells well. Anthropology? Um, yeah, there's shop. Is that there's a shop? There's a shop called Anthropology. Oh, it sells well um, in the US. Okay. Um, and then I realised it wasn't. But I've looked it up and it's a really good brand actually sure. too. So it's a blouse. It's right? actually by JD Williams, which is a catalogue, but it sells really well. Um, so I'm going to list it for between 12 and 15 pounds. And that was 150, is that right? Yeah, it was one pound fifty. Cool. So I, I picked it up really because I love the pattern. Yeah, that's nice. Really, really love the pattern. Yeah. And then you picked this up, didn't you, in the charity shop? It's Ted Baker. Oh yeah. And it's a man's shirt. Um, yeah, and it's you know bog standard sort of casual shirt. That um, was two pounds. Yeah. I don't and know what they're worth. Is it worth picking up? Yeah, I'm going to do it again between twelve and fifteen. So. Sweet. So yeah, two nice little pickups um, on the sale rail in the charity shop. I picked up a couple of bog standard skirts, a couple of Marks and Spencer's things, um, but they weren't as interesting to show really. So. No problem. Yeah. Sorry, I was just distracted by the chat. I just saw the hair <laughs> pop in. Yeah. Um, just scrolling back to see what we've missed. Oh, there were questions about the hardhead. Yes. So we probably ought to We'll talk touch about on that. the Atari game in a second. Uh, just. Going back through, excuse me. Yeah, Zahir there, it says hi. Hi, Zahir. Uh, great chat earlier. That was really funny, actually. <laughs> Lots of talk about trolleys. We, you were watching in the other room, yeah, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were trying I to was, convince Zahir. I was Zaheer, watching and photographing at the same time. Trying to <laughs> convince Zahir he can, he can rock a trolley. Yeah, I think you should. They're really good. <laughs> I don't even care what I look like now, as long as I don't have to carry heavy bags. Yeah, time. you kind of have to leave your pride on the floor if you're worried about what you look yeah, like. I don't care. Yeah, nobody's looking. Yeah. Um, Gary in there says, when are you going to Poland? Yeah, right. why not? <laughs> We're not going to Poland. Hopefully the cart is in Poland by now. We sent it by FedEx, um, fully tracked and insured. The whole works which wasn't cheap but when you're dealing with a five thousand plus pound item i don't yep. think you want to scrimp on that sort of stuff so it costs us over 100 pounds to get it shipped airmail fedexed over to him we haven't heard anything yet no um fedex were giving us notifications by email mm. regularly in all the steps and i haven't had one recently so i don't know i've, not, I've lost it <laughs> So, yeah, and Andrew did a, an interesting blog post about the fees because when we when we were live, I think people were saying, oh, the fees are capped at this amount yeah. and it won't be any more than X amount. Apparently, you found out it, it varies depending on the shop type you have. Yeah. So um, some people are saying that uh, it's capped at 250 um, on the fees. For 250. The, yeah, 250 on eBay final value fees. But that's only for a basic shop. We have a featured shop and they charged us 8%. And yeah, I, I needed confirmation on that. That's what it, it said when I did the research, but we have actually been charged 8%. It's, we've been charged 408 pounds mm -hmm. and 80p for the postage. <laughs> oh yeah, there was, I was using a template and there was actually postage on there for international of, of 9.99, which I've got on for my other loose carts, which is enough to cover international tract because they weigh like 20 grams or something yeah. so he actually paid 9.99 and then we spent over 100 pounds which is fine yeah again it's fine and i don't begrudge the fees to be perfectly honest without ebay without that platform to get a to attract the guy or to for the guy to find it and tell me hey this is something special and then for me to take that buy it now off and then to, to, to reach a worldwide audience that is prepared to pay lots of money. You need a platform like eBay, so you have to pay for it. And I, I never begrudge eBay fees. No, not at all. Um, um, but PayPal then hit us for yeah, 200. 200. Over 200. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you take all the fees and the postage that, that we obviously fronted, we didn't ask him for any more for the postage. He'd already paid his 999. Um, I can't remember what it was. 600 pounds, was it? No, more than that. For what? Total, we Total. paid out. Oh yeah, more than that. So it's um, four, five, six, seven, was, seven hundred odd. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> off of that. Um, so bear that in mind. Obviously, you know, when we do our tax 
that would be. Yeah, and everyone is taxed on the money you make. So, off, so on the profit we did make, there will so be tax. So what we worked out is that the prof, our net profit would be about three and a half grand, and um, which is fantastic. Would really. that be after income tax? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which just is brilliant. So yeah, but I I did the blog post because I just thought that was interesting because uh, if you could look at a sale like that and think, oh my god, that's amazing. You you've got over five thousand pounds, but that's not reality because that's not what. We take home at the end of it because everybody else takes their piece hmm. piece of the pie and um and it's and it's the same with everything you sell the percentages are, are the same if not well similar yeah yeah so, it's just it seems more because it's such a well, bigger it, value it's, item it's a big old chunk know, of change. it's more noticeable because yes you know, the, the fees are so much higher no, but no. like we said we we are just waiting for this guy to get a lovely chap he's messaged us a few times yeah. he left us a really lovely message didn't he? yeah we're just hoping he gets it safely and then he messages us and he leaves good feedback and then yeah. i will finally yeah, relax oh, yeah moving on because so, none of us very often will get a sale like this and it's actually quite stressful we're so used to dealing with 20 pound sales 50 pound sales the odd you know two or three hundred pound sale and that's it's exciting as well yeah but that's kind of manageable and normal is, yeah. but when you get into the thousands it does become quite stressful it was really enjoyable and i enjoyed the whole experience but yeah i realized when it was kind of finally over it was just like oh thank god that's but now <laughs> we're still waiting for the feedback anyway we will keep you guys informed hopefully it runs smoothly and he lets us know that he's happy yeah um What's that? Graham says 119 watching and only eight likes. Come on, guys. Well, if you do like it, yeah, give us a thumbs up. We've got 170 viewers currently. I don't know if I've got a screen open with it on. Uh, there we are. Oh, yeah, 20 likes. <laughs> right. Let's pop in the chat and see what's going on. Um, there's Joe in there, my pack rat says, trying to, oh, hang on. It's just about to read your comment, Joe, and it disappeared. Trying to watch Nick and Andrea whilst keeping an eye on the Indy 500. Life's not easy. <laughs> First world problems. Yeah. Um, got box set of seven, 37 CDs, classical Stravinsky for 30p, Amazon price 225. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's money in CDs, but it's getting harder and harder. People message me a lot. There's still some really old videos of mine on there where I used to do a lot of CDs on eBay. Yeah, because not, not only are you competing with the downloads, you're now competing with... Music Magpie. Uh, well, vinyl is what I was going to say. That people well, yeah. are, are buying more vinyl these days. So they're either downloading or vinyl, and cassettes and CDs are you know, going by the wayside. Not, not being sold as much. Yeah. But I, I really think the thing that's hit CD sales on Amazon and eBay is the fact that the likes of Music Magpie and Ziffit and We Buy Books, they all sell somewhere mm. and they all sell on eBay and Amazon. And, you know, they operate on, a, on the, the logistics of scale. So they're happy to take tiny, tiny margins on each item because they're selling millions of them. And mm. it just, it's dragged the price of, CDs down and down and down so you have to pick up rare stuff or you have to add value to them in some way which you can still bundle stuff I used to do a lot more of that most of the time now I don't bother unless I've got a ready-made bundle that I can pick up the list straight away which I've got a few of in here which will be nice um, right let's catch up in uh, the chat. Phoebe says that anthology is sold by Marisota and simply be JD Williams owns them right that's cool that's good to know Excellent. I just noticed on the label that it said J.D. Williams, so learning uh, something new every day. Yeah, thanks for the <laughs> tip. Um, Tim Temp Gerhard, I think that's his name, says, look for Allman Brothers stuff. Since Greg passed away yesterday, items will be increasing in value. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's news to me. That's a shame. Yeah. Um, Happy Chat says, at boot fairs now, you look odd without a trolley. There's a lot of people rocking the trolley look. Yeah, I yeah. do get some scowls when, when it's busy and I'm trying to get through with my trolley. <laughs> get some looks. Yeah, 
in Zaheer's chat when we were talking about trolleys, somebody was saying that it's so easy to leave the trolley behind, and I've done that before. And the other thing is you can be stood there on a stool, or sometimes I'll park it at the end of the table and have a rummage. People dive in your trolley yeah, thinking really it's do. part of the stool, or even if it's just behind you, and I've even got my hand on it, people are lifting stuff out. I've had stuff nicked out of my trolley. Yeah, you've got to keep your eyes peeled at big stuff. Um, so he has been on a trolley speed awareness course. <laughs> That's what he was nicked for. Ah, excellent. Um, what's that? CYV says, amateur, didn't use my Hermes to send his $5,000 cart. $5,000? Why did I say dollar? Found cart. No, we didn't use Hermes for this one. Uh, Squirt Nation says, hello, Nick. Hi there. Um, If you see anything you want to read out, just read. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when we're both just reading, well, I was it's wondering just... how you pronounce. Is it Ian B, Matt, or Lan? I don't know. How do you pronounce that? I don't know. Anyway, I'll read your comment. It says, hello, guys, suffering from sunstroke from boot sale. Yeah, it kind of hits I think you. You, you were ill, weren't you? You had a bad headache yesterday. Yeah, I had a really bad headache. That's probably a big sign. I know, I didn't Oh, no, Saturday to... we were out there, weren't we? Yeah, it's yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got, got sunstroke clearly as well. I'm not yeah. good with what days it is. Um, right, let's see if there's any questions or topics we can touch on before carrying on. Oh, hang on. It's really warm in here as well. It's yeah. I should <laughs> I have opened. I myself the... getting redder and redder the hotter I'm getting. So, question: Re that cart. That was a guy who was bidding from the outset. His username. Did you ever contact him to see if he was genuine and did he have a story felt bad for him? I contacted, um, I was chatting with a load of guys on an Atari forum and they gave me a load of grief basically because they thought I was bidding up my own listing because there were two mm. or three, like you said, there were two or three buyers on there putting in loads and loads and loads of bids. Uh, a couple of them had very low feedback. Um, when I started getting all this grief, I messaged four or five of the buyers that were at the top and Two got back to me that were genuine, the others never replied. I don't know which username you're talking about there. I don't recognize the letters you put in. No. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, the guy won it fair and square and, and he's got it. But yeah, exactly. if, if they really wanted it, they should have bid higher. That's all I can say. Um, falling on a bruise. I'm waiting for my two auctions to end Pippa Dolls. Cost me about 50p at 30 pounds and 17 so far. Cool. Okay, good luck with that. Yeah, CYB is just agreeing there. Music Magpie killed the CD and DVD trade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the other, on the other side of that, I'll give them this. So many people have tried Music Magpie. They now think that their CDs are worth pennies because that's all they give you. So I've found the price people ask for CDs and DVDs, at boot, DVDs particularly, you know, you can go to stores and they're like 10p, 20p quite often. 50p is kind of the cap for most people, yeah. whereas not that long ago, they were a pound wherever you went. So you can get the decent stuff that little bit cheaper, I think, because people think their CDs hold no value at all because yeah. Magpie give you next to nothing. Um, Graham Nichols says, question for Nick and Andrea, do you use eBay snipers or manually bid for eBay drop lots? Do you I, use a sniper? I snipe, thing? yeah. I find something I'm interested in, I copy the number, put it in my sniping tool and forget about it. And then I'll get a notification if and when I win. Um, I've not been doing much sniping at all recently. I picked up a few nice little bits, but not really been looking. Um, I'm still supposed to be on a clearing out stock mission. Um, which has been a bit derailed, really. My head hasn't been in the game for the last week or so with this whole Atari yeah. thing. I and don't then... really get involved with the whole sniping thing. I know some people do, but I just haven't. You've not tried I, it, I don't you, really then? sort of buy off eBay to sell on eBay kind of thing. So. No. It's good. I'd recommend it, people. It works. It really does. Um, so here, Malik says... See people rummaging through my trolley would be the last straw. 
Yeah, it's a bit disconcerting to be fair when you turn around and someone's got your yeah, stuff and in it, there. It doesn't happen all the time, it is a rare thing. That's pretty honest, rare. But it yeah. has happened. Um, you should buy Granny wig to go with the trolley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. Oh, there's loads of chat going on. Hold on, hold on. Um, Silver Phoenix, congratulations on the cart again. Thank you. Keep up the good videos. We will try. Um, right. So I don't really have much else to share. I did pick up. We picked up two of these at a jumble that yeah. you spotted, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Um, it's worth remembering if you can this pattern, which is that. Eternal bow. Eternal bow, yeah, spelled B E A U. Mm. Yeah. These are just food warmers, like you stick your, your takeaway on it to keep it warm. They've got two little candles in. And yeah. And they're, they're generally they're not worth anything, but because it's got that pattern on and people collect it. We had a couple that you found at a jumble sale that we paid like 50p for. And they sold for 20 for the pair. So when I was wandering around, someone had exactly the same pair. At a pound oh, each, I thought, yeah, go on then. Um, so I grabbed those. Oh, I got some Nerf. There's, grab that one a sec. <coughs> I went up to a stall, spotted the Nerf, and there was a load of other guns that were like fake Nerf, you know, like supermarket owned brands and stuff. Anyway, I said to the two little guys there, one must have been about eight, and the other one four or something and I said to the two boys who were sitting with their little cloth and all their toys and stuff on it, I said to the guys, how much are your guns? And one little boy goes, pound each, and the other one said, ten pounds each. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then the mother came along and I said, do you know how much the guns are? Because I've been given two prices, a pound each and ten pounds each. And she, and she just said, um, you can have the lot for a tenner. So I said, well, I don't want the, these ones here. I'll just take these three. So I got these three for tenner, which I thought was fair. These are Raiders, and I'm just going to pull the blind because our neighbour's just come out, and oh no, he's just gone back in. Well, you probably just gone to call the police. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so self-conscious because straight across the road, there's a guy who comes out, and he's quite a heavy smoker. He's always out there on his porch having a fag, and then he can just see straight in here, and we're here going, yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, we're pointing guns at him. <laughs> pointing guns at him. Anyway, he's gone. He'll be peering out of his window. He will be. So yeah, two of these raiders uh, with, importantly, these barrels. You can sell these barrels for fairly good money. I, I don't know what I've got on these before. 15, 20 pound each, maybe. Don't quote me on that one. But yeah, as a setup like that, I think top end you're looking at 25, 30 a gun. Yeah. So those are nice. And a little, what are they called? Barricade. Yeah. Which aren't worth a lot, but I'll bundle it. Well, I might chuck it in with one of those. This is a battery operated one, so you'd have to change the batteries to test these. But yeah. And I did order from eBay. It was ridiculously cheap. I don't know if there's an invoice in it. was about £2 something for 100 of these. So I can chuck some in with the guns and use them to test the guns. So that's all good. I was going to say with the eternal bow, didn't you pick up some other things? So yeah, they're still in the car. Tea, oh, right. tea and coffee jars and stuff. Yeah, I bought a set of like milk, glass, tea, coffee, sugar. Yeah, which canister I, my nan used to have a set of that. And so it really brings it back to me, that whole feeling of taking the lid off. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my mum... Um, well, I was there with, as I said, next to my sister and her partner and their son. And then my other sister turned up with her twins and little baby Nina. And then my mum turned up. It was like a little family <laughs> gathering. And I showed mum these little eternal bow, coffee and tea, whatever you call it, whole pots with lids. And she said, oh, we had some of them a while back. Chucked them away. Chucked them away, honestly. <laughs> she probably donated them to charity. Yeah, she doesn't I throw much so. away, to be honest. And the only other thing I picked up, like I said, we didn't really get a lot. Why I've bought more of this, I don't know. And I bought this off my sister. 
it's it's really heavy. There's so much in here. These are match attacks. Most of the albums are they're not full, but this all they're to pretty David? good. No, this was part of a, a big job lot they bought off eBay, oh. and they've taken the cream of the stuff out, and the rest they were boot selling. Ooh. So yeah, loads of pretty packed albums, and then loads and loads of stacks of cards. There's a few thousand cards in here. I have a crate bigger than this that's absolutely full that I can barely pick up anymore because I've been putting off doing a job lot for like a year and now I've got another few thousand to add to it. So I need to do that. Yeah. So that's it. That's to the list of all the other things you need to do. <laughs> if I actually wrote a list of jobs I should be doing, I'd, I'd well, never end I it. I think that's why we never write a to-do list. Yeah, it'd scare the hell out of us. Um, right, what are we doing in the chat? What's it mean when eBay mention live content, says Seabron100? It's like videos, isn't it? Embed embedded videos or... Um, Graphics that are moving yeah. and little scrolling. Uh, Octiva, I think, has a lot of active content. Um, and they're doing away with all that for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, um, will you take less? Said I saw a fella using two suitcases sourcing today. Yeah, well, that's becoming quite trendy. <laughs> as, as the JC files on um, Instagram, and he also has a YouTube video now, YouTube channel rather. Um, he uses a suitcase to source books, so he takes his suitcase with him to charity shops. And now Fake Rachel's got a, her very own suitcase that she takes sourcing to charity shops to fill up with books. Really? So, yeah. What with wheels on? Yeah. Oh, uh, that makes it just, sense. It makes sense, doesn't it? Because you don't have to carry it all. You can fill up your suitcase yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you can pull it along. Brilliant. Yeah, and you'll look Fantastic quite... Fantastic idea. You'll look quite normal with a suitcase. I don't know. At a boot sale, would you? <laughs> well, no, going normal. down the charity shops, you yeah, would. Yeah, the charity shops, you would. But books get heavy really quick. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Twixy Vlogs says, I bought a lot of vintage watches today, paid 50 pence each, and some are worth over 100. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> nice find. Um, good point. This is CYB. Good point about the re evaluation of DVDs after Music Magpie. Give you next to nothing. Yeah, I think the general public, and with like CEX as well, a lot of people have tried them and they give you literally a penny for a lot of titles yeah and it's it's ridiculous but the perception is that that media holds no resale value which is good for us if you know what you're looking for you can get it cheap a lot of the time um it's just jumped again it just jumped really fast i right. was just going to say that we've got our weekly weather report from sunny scotland and it's very sunny today apparently sun drenched wow this is old haggis hunter um right let's catch up with the chat and do some questions and things um, researching CDs is the biggest pain for me. This is IL Matt. Um, but it has paid off. Different pressings bring in different dollar amounts. Early and first pressing CDs are the best to get. Yes. And some of these Neil Diamonds are good case in point because a lot of these are early pressings. Um, so like the, kind of like in books, your first edition. You know, if, if a, a CD was released in 1985 and they did a pressing in 1985, the ones that followed will be different. Uh, and some of these are really early ones. Um, they're normally dated on the actual disc as well, if you can't find it on the case. So, yeah, I'll be going through those with a fine tooth comb and seeing what I've got. But, yeah, good point. Um, there was a guy at Windyke today wanting £5 each for DVDs. PS2. Yeah, some people just don't know, and you'll find that a lot. It's like when you go to a store and they've got a load of DS games and they want five or six pounds each, and you're thinking, oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> but you can't tell them. You know, you can't, what are you going to do? To them, that's the value of their stuff. You just pull up. You just say, thank you very much. And move on. Um. Oh yeah, there's Haggis Hunter with his weather report. <laughs> Oh, no, it's not someone talking about old Haggis Hunter. Anyway, yeah, you, I missed it. it. Um, question. If someone bought the hardhead cart for £100 and then you realised what it was, would you have sent it? Yeah. That's a good question. I think we probably would. 
it would have been a tricky but i would i would still have not have known how much potential it had because yeah. even when this guy told me i think this is something special blah 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 i had no concept that it was worth thousands <clears throat> but yeah there's a moral kind of question in there um i'd like to think i'd have honored the sale yeah i think we would tricky one uh there's mm -hmm. kirsten in there I am starting to sweat. I know, right it's now. so hot. So hot, I might have to open the window. Or maybe we could open um, Richard Payne says that he found Hang a on. vintage slow cooker with a turn of those hat on. We had one of those, didn't we? Yeah, I sold one uh, a few weeks back. I got. What did I get on it? 25? I can't remember now, but something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah people collect that. So they have kitchens and they want everything to match. So yeah, yeah. it's worth looking out for. And Deverton Junction says, My nan has plates with those patterns. She'll wonder why they'll be missing so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where are my plates yeah. gone? Yeah, Nanny just got rid of all of hers. I don't know what she did them. Probably had charity or boots out there. Or... What, eternal bow plates? Yeah, now she's got a willow pattern. Ah, another <laughs> classic. Yeah. Um, v says, oh, I'm late for my Sunday Nick and Andrea live hangout. That's all right, you can watch it back. <laughs> um... Nick and Andrea, have you ever been to Tetsworth? Is that? It's on tomorrow as well. There was a lot of great things available. I don't know. Where is that? Tetsworth, don't they? No, it's the we, answer. We, we didn't go out today um, oh, we'll because the weather was predicted to be really stormy, wasn't it? Yeah, well, also we did a boot sale yesterday and we were planning to go tomorrow. So yes, yeah, so we kind of had the day off, just but we're planning to try and pop to I'm one tomorrow. I'm Googling Tetsworth. <laughs> Um, but I don't know what the weather's going to do tomorrow. I know there's a couple on tomorrow, though. Oh. Kids playing outside, peering in. Oh, it's tame. It's where? It's tame, but an hour and ten minutes away from us. We probably won't, then. There's a couple much nearer that we'll go to. Yeah. Um, Beaknik. Out in garden, Andrew and Nick, have a battle. What? About what? What did I miss? Oh, with the Nerf guns, probably. Oh, Nerf bat. Oh, I'd love to. Uh, Adrian says, hi. Hi, Adrian. Awkwardly British. What's that about? <laughs> the trouble, we, we catch up with the chat later and then we, we forget what we've been talking about. Um, don't agree with kids playing with any type of guns. Yeah, I, have what you yeah, I do, I do understand that. that. Luckily, Ellen was never keen on anything like that anyway. So. Mm. <laughs> Nick and Andrea tooled up for neighbourhood watch. Yeah. There's, there's Nick and Andrea threatening neighbours with napkins. <laughs> we weren't threatening anyone, honest governor. Yeah. Uh, UK reseller says he's got one of those guns. Yeah, they're good. They, they, whenever I have them, they sell quick for me. Nick, get away from the door. SWAT team about to blow it off its hinges. <laughs> Imagine if he called the police on us. I, I think he, I think you might be peeking out, watching us. He's got his eyes on us. We'll see binoculars come out. Now. You can probably hear the train. There's a train line just behind us out. Um, we don't really hear it. Well, we do, but we kind of block it out. I don't even yeah. notice the train. Well, we've lived here ten years, so we block out the trains quite easily now. But um, when these windows are open, you'll hear them. Question, um, do you buy boxes from eBay to send large items as I find them so expensive or do you just try to find a box from somewhere else? Generally I do quite well finding boxes. I have a few sites and a few shops that I that I go to. Um, I have bought boxes but mainly for M Amazon FBA um, and I need to buy some more really. Although when we were in where we found a massive stash of boxes, didn't we? Remember when I filled the back of the car up with boxes? So <laughs> yeah, we had to drive down a back alley so you could... There's, there's some the here. Boxes. There's a box full of boxes there, great big ones, big double walled ones, so yeah. Um, okay, let's mm -hmm. keep going in the chat. Because, we did we have anything else we were going to talk about and then share? You wrote a list. Oh, oh yeah. I think we've um, covered everything. Yeah, okay. We'll just keep chatting with the uh, chat. I saw something I was going to read then. Uh, Lisa says, is the eternal bow stuff worth, worth money now then? Seems not, to be. Not a great deal. Yeah, and it's not huge. Uh, but and it is collectible. Yeah, it's a case of 
pitching and waiting really with that stuff. Yeah. It's not super fast selling. But the last time we had these little tray things, they weren't on long. No, they weren't. And no. the slow cooker wasn't on long. Either. No, the slow cooker was probably on a month. That Otis There's a huge pound. trend for um, vintage and retro homes. So people are going back to their childhood and, and just wanting what they had as a child, I suppose. Yep. Yeah, and a lot of people kit out their houses to look like 1980s or 70s mm -hmm. or whatever. What do you call that? There's no word for that. I would have just said it was a retro home. Okay. Here comes a train. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, there's more talk about magpie in there, retro cable. Magpie is just big numbers. One million times 15p is good profit for them. They have low overheads and very cheap postage deals. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a business model that works because they're being copied by other people. Yeah. And there's, there's firms cropping up in America that you hear get talked about. What are they called? Clear it out or... Lots of people walking past, you might be able to hear them. <laughs> Getting a running commentary yeah. of what's going on behind you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a business model that works and fair play to them. You know, they, they've they've nailed it really with that and they're happy. And you know, if you go in Poundland and you've got their replay CDs, which are any old CD re shoot wrapped and it's got replay on it, I think Power, um, Music Magpie supplies them. Mm, I'm pretty that sure. Would make sense. Yeah, because I picked something up in there didn't I and inside they put one of their music magpie leaflets that's what confirmed it yeah, yeah. Uh, oh sorry the chat's just jumped again I'm so sore and I'm really itchy <laughs> if I press it it goes white oh there's loads of chat I, like to, uh, I don't know how far back to go right let's go here uh, is Music Magpie worth it? Yes and no. Depends how much you've invested in your stuff. This massive job lot I picked up today, I did work it out. They owe me pennies each because I've got 300 for £20. And I've already taken out two or £300 worth that I'm going to put on Amazon and eBay. So this stuff, you know, I'm all, yeah. I haven't sold it yet, but in theory I'm in fantastic profit on the good stuff. The rest of it, all of these piles that I tried to show you before, if I send all of those in a box, they pay the shipping to Music Magpie or Ziffit, which I'm finding are really good actually. Ziffit don't take as much stuff, they're more fussy, but they give you better money than Magpie on most stuff. But what I was going to say was the rest of it that isn't worth reselling, if I just chuck it in a box and send it to one of these guys and they give me 20, 30, 40, whatever for it, it's a bonus. money for nothing. Yeah. So yeah, but don't expect a lot. <laughs> On your items and if they do if suddenly you scan one in and it comes up at two or three pounds then you want to check it out on ebay and amazon because mm. that's where they get their information from but also i mean if you your investment is hardly anything which it was with this then it's probably worth picking up a great big box for 20 pounds and yeah you know you can double triple your money yeah so. another train i don't know <laughs> they might not be able to hear that and no, just us going, train. Train. um have you cooled down? I might shut the window in a minute. Actually, that's no, it's really hot. Um, oh, there's Heather. Hi, Heather. She says, hey, late again. Hi, everyone. Um, all right, let's move on. Um, I had a great find this morning at Carboot. Two working Nintendo DS lights for £6 a two. Fantastic. I picked up two that I think I shared a couple of weeks ago, a DS Lite and a DS Fat, the original. Um, the fiber but the hinge has gone on the light so that's pretty naff. Uh, John Moling has said have you ever found any pre preset horror VHS videos? No but I know there's good money in it because yeah, yeah some stuff was never reissued yeah. so yeah yeah. It's the sort of stuff that Ben looks out for isn't it? My cousin Ben. Oh your cousin Ben yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah videos it's another market where you can dismiss 99% of videos is having any value whatsoever these days, but there is if you know what you're looking for a tiny percentage that will get you good money and when we started eBay and Amazon back in Late 90s and then went full-time in 2001 whatever it was 
we bought and sold so many videos. Yeah. We used to buy up box sets, and I remember buying loads of Ali McBeagle box sets. Do you remember? Yeah. And selling those on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and now I, I tend to avoid videos most of the time. No, but there is money in some of them. Yeah, that's what I say. Yeah. yeah, and we sold some uh, kids ones not long ago. Yeah. They're fairly good money. Um, Seabron 100, I sent you a parcel with a few bits I couldn't sell. I bet you can sell them. Maybe I received a parcel. Do you mean you sent us a parcel? If you have, we haven't had it yet. Um, okay. Pete's Retro Collectible has got a Sony mini disc with all the extras and eight sealed discs for five pounds. That's damn good. The, the discs are worth more than a fiver, let alone the player. Uh, Martin there, so Martin Anon says, Hi, I volunteer in a charity shop. If you want to ask anything, we sell our books and DVDs to zip it if it's over a specific value. Well, that's interesting to know. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me. Because they must get so much volume. Yeah. And they've got to turn it over. Yeah. yeah I, I was scanning stuff into zip it today. And there's a couple of books that I'm sending to them that were, they weren't great money, but it's stuff I want to get rid of. I think one was about a pound and the other was about 50p. And I sent some books, uh, a few bits that we got at that book sale, I sent to Magpie the other week because they had they were given good money on them and they had really high ranks, so I didn't particularly want to send them in a way. So I got rid. Okay, let's see what else we've got in here. Um, Bixie Blog says, just to say, um, look out for swatch watches from 85 to 90 as they're extremely rare. And they range up to two hundred and fifty yeah. pounds. That is, um, yeah. I used to I have one. Swatch watch. I had a pop swatch, yeah. and I had a regular swatch as well. I had a couple. Yeah. Yeah. I think I broke most of mine. That was back at the time when I was skateboarding, and I used to knacker them. Yeah. I loved them. I had mine for years. Um. Right. Tetsworth in Oxford. That's how far behind oh, okay. <laughs> um, Yeah, Mar that is. No, it isn't. <coughs> Maria says, I remember Caroline, Mrs. M, mentioning that the two tier cake stands in Eternal Bow go really well. Mm, yeah. Okay, keep your eyes peeled for those. You just got to remember what that pattern looks like. Yeah. So for those of you who just come in and don't know what we're talking about, I picked these up, they're not really not worth worrying about too much, but for the pair I'm hoping to get 20. That's what it is, a pink bow intertwined with roses, no not roses, some sort of flower. Sort of, yeah, pinky red flowers. And they basically put that pattern on anything and everything from the kitchen. <clears throat> um, Hi Nick and Andrew, you said previously you play poker. Do you ever play online? Not anymore. I used to play a fair bit online, but I find it really dull. For me, poker is a social, it's a social thing. I do it more for the friends that I play with than, than the money. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoy poker. I like to think I'm good at it. I did win this week. Yeah. Yep. I'm happy with that. Um, Blitz says, I always get my boxes from work. Trouble is 90% of them say Fujifilm, so it makes them look valuable. You could always just stick a bit of paper over it or something. Tape. Um, Carla says, sorry she's late, it was a here and Beck's fault. <laughs> oh, probably watch, catching up on their chat. All right, it's just jumped to the end, so let's actually answer some questions that have just come in or some comments. Uh, David Moore says, sometimes you can make more from empty VHS cases on eBay than sell them with the videos. Yeah, I think Caroline was doing a bit of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good tip because most are just trash. Even chat, some charity shops don't even take them anymore. 
they're just worthless. I mean, most people these days, if their video breaks, they don't replace it. And videos aren't widely sold, which is why, ironically, you can make good money selling on videos because nobody sells them anymore. Yeah. But yeah, the actual video films. Um, Kay says, how is your little dog? Is he any better? Uh, yeah, he is actually. He's still taking his painkillers, but um, at home he wouldn't think anything was wrong with him. Sometimes he's a bit limpy outside. He's a bit limpy. <laughs> a bit, bit limpy. Well, we took him out earlier and he seemed fine. He, we take him on a, you know, around a few blocks and he was painfully slow coming back. But um, he does that anyway because he doesn't like to come home. It is hard to know if it's just because he's in a bit of pain or if he's worn out or if he just doesn't want to come home. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, earlier in the week, I went to take him to the field and um, he was doing that on the way to the field and normally he's pulling so hard because he wants desperate to get there. So I knew something was up there. But he's, he's much better since then. Yeah. Yeah, no, there'll be no long-term damage. He, he seems yeah, absolutely fine. Um, yeah, and David Moore says that Ziffit and We Buy Books can offer more than Magpie. Yeah, I've been trying We Buy Books tonight as well, and they've turned down just about everything. That guy's come out again. The guy, the guy over the road is, is out having another fag. I want to shut the window. You can probably hear us. Shut the window. I can't reach. It's a bit awkward. He's staring right at us. I know. <laughs> I'm going to shut the blinds. No, Lisa, he's not still what? staring at um, laughing <laughs> kitchen cupboard doors. It's just ibuprofen type stuff now. It's not the um, <coughs> not the happy stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was only for one day, and he oh, it was horrible. I knew it was for his own good <coughs> because he was in so much pain. He needed it, but he was out of it for a good twenty-four hours or more, wasn't he? He well, they were strong opioid-based painkillers, so... He really wasn't himself. He didn't even want to eat his dinner, so... that, In fact, that was worse <coughs> than him hurting his leg for me. It was just seeing him like that. It was, wasn't good. I was very happy when I woke up the next morning and he was wagging his tail and actually wanted his dentist stick, so... That was a big relief. Yeah. I'm going to shut this blind because this bloke's putting me off. <laughs> putting you off your game. Well, it's disconcerting when you've got know, a guy standing is, over there just like puffing away. Just, like, and he's a bit odd as well. <laughs> he's all right. I said hello to him again the other day. I've just never had a proper chat no, with I mean, the guy. He is. They're he's, moving out, actually. He frightened They're... the life out of me just after they moved in. Because, really? Yeah, I, I got in my car to go to Asda late at night. It was dark. And I literally just got in the car. I was about to put the... Um, key in the ignition and suddenly he appeared at the window and he was just there and I jumped out of my skin and I wound the window down and he said apparently you're taking a parcel in for me it was like 10 o'clock at night absolutely I frightened the life out of me if it was going to murder me first <laughs> I've heard of this wow yeah um, I, I saw a message I wanted to read uh, Leanne Tyson said hi been watching you for a while now. I am I I now am reselling on eBay. Always watch your bids for inspiration. Thank you. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. It's it's little messages like that. I get some really lovely ones on Facebook and stuff that make all of this worthwhile to know that, you know, people enjoy what we do because it is supposed to be entertaining as well, but also that it helps inspire people to give this a go. Yeah. Um question, have you bought any more Tomy Pokemon figures you have sold in your other videos? Um, no, I haven't found any since. I would buy them if I found them. But no, they all went. And there was lots of money in them, actually. So he had some as well. He's yeah. shown some of his sales. Um, <laughs> Radio silence again. <laughs> Andrea, uh, Lisa says, um, my eldest cat is on very strong painkillers every day for severe osteoarthritis. Um, that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm hoping you won't get to that point, but you never know. UK driver, this is Joe over in America, is watching the Indy 500, so we're getting an update. Uh, driver Max Chilton is in the lead, and he's a UK driver. Uh, 10 laps to go. Wow. I wonder, I, I don't really follow that. Has a Brit ever won it, Joe? I didn't really know we raced in that, oh guys. No, I didn't know. I, I know very little about Indy 500. I, I follow the Formula One a bit, but... <laughs> Sid K says, bloody hell, I just went out for a smoke and some weird guy talking into his computer. <laughs> Thinks I'm looking at him. <laughs> is that you? Just, if it is, come over and have a cup of tea, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah. Lisa Fenn, my friend's dog needed a blood test and it cost cost him 400 wow mm -hmm. Monty had a blood test which I know you disagree but he, he completely didn't need they were just like selling this up and um, I don't know how much so how much was the blood pounds. test 80 pounds to find out that there was nothing wrong well there might have been something wrong so I it know. was good to find out there wasn't anything wrong yeah. yeah, we've we've argued about this ever since. <laughs> um, Kevin Rosen says that he's taking his driving test, and you you've scrolled up, so I've lost when oh, he's where, taking it. Oh, where? Where? But um, no, practical. Where it is. Oh, practical. Where does it? I can't. Driving oh, test on, on Wednesday. So best of luck for that. They've changed it all now, haven't they? They have to learn about how to use a sat nav and, and do all of that. What in the practical? Um, well, just in test in general. Mm. I'm glad. I'm glad I took it when I did. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you still have to do the questions, like the the written as well? I think so. But I think it's all on like a computer now, isn't it? Like you have to multiple choice type thing. I don't know. It's been so long since I did my driving. Yeah. 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 Um, how would have time? It's been over twenty oh. years. I just suddenly realised that I took my driving test. Yeah, I left it fairly late. Oh, I God. I passed in ninety seven, uh, almost exactly about the time we got together. Yeah. 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 I was driving around in a clapped out old Ford Escort Mark One. <laughs> Horrible brown colour thing, wasn't it? It's was awful. <laughs> and you had a Mini Metro. Yeah, I liked my Mini Metro. Sky blue sort of thing. Yeah, I loved it, but. It, yeah, it was very old and didn't last very long. Yeah, it didn't always go. It actually broke down just before my test. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your cars were, were pretty appalling for, for a while. You had a, what was that one that broke down in the middle of the month? On the, the M25? It was a Peugeot 205. I liked that car as well. But that the death trap. We, we were on the M25. I'm driving in the, you don't take the like, motorway driving, and in long trips I tend to drive. So I'm on the M25 coming home in the fast lane doing 70, let's say. And, uh, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> and power lost all, the car lost all power. But I'm in the fast lane, busy, and I've. Yeah, I mean, the motorway was packed. Yeah. So I'm, I'm there with my arm out the window going, ah! Well, I said, wind the window down luckily it was a hand thing because we had no power and um so I, we I, literally had to cruise did it have left. power steering i can't remember but i said it stick your hand out of the window because i don't want to stop in the fast lane and i need yeah. to get across to the hard shoulder so she stuck around out the window and i just went through four lanes of traffic like you this can imagine the slowing went down on. as i went but thank god nobody hit us we just coasted to a yeah. stop didn't we really scary and then we sat on the side of the motorway waiting for the AA. I can't remember what was wrong with it. Something dramatic had died. Mm. Yeah. yeah. We, we've not had much joy with French cars. We then had a Renault Clio that the electrics were just bonkers on. Oh, wow. Nobody could fix the electrics on it. A mind of its own. So we got rid of that. <laughs> oh, just dropped a third, Joe says. Our man's oh. in third. Oh, and he's not sure if, uh, if a Brit has ever won. But Kevin says five Brit winners. Oh, there you go. Good old Google, I guess. <laughs> okay, so what else have we got in here? I think you just skipped past a question. Oh. Um, oh, here we are. Sharking Mum deals. I'm curious, in the US, a lot of reseller content providers are being harassed on their channels by trolls. Does that occur very often over here? Unfortunately, it has done. We have been 
Yeah, um, there was a period where a complete bunch of time-wasting sad people thought it was fun to troll mm -hmm. our channel and others. But yeah, they went away, hopefully found something constructive yeah. to do with their time and their lives. I think they pop up every now and then. I think Ads had a little bit of trolling the other day, didn't they? Yeah, it's just, um, it's just life. There are idiots Cora in the world. have been trolled as well. Um, with trolls, uh, you just give them what they deserve, which is no attention. Yeah. And whatsoever. luckily, we've got some really nice moderators in our chat now. <laughs> yeah, if you see so, moderate it, people who have a little spanner next to their name, they're, they're there to be able to delete comments yeah. and stuff. Darren is our lightning fast moderator, isn't yeah. he? <laughs> Yeah, but luckily, if I moderate it for anyone else, and Darren's moderating as well, I barely get to read it before it's gone. I don't yeah, know how it's I like a ninja. Quick. Darren's a ninja mod. Yeah. Um, but I was going to say, luckily, most people that follow us, you know, are are perfectly fine and yeah, happy to really just lovely. chat and send us nice messages. Um, yeah, but you get that on the internet. People just, I don't know what they get out of it. Really, very sad. Just no lives really if they think that's enjoyable mm -hmm. um trolls are a natural part of live streaming yeah exactly yeah okay well we i'm sorry we didn't have a great deal to share with you today we were on a mission this weekend to um clear yeah, stuff rather than stuff. buy it although we are going out mm -hmm. tomorrow now where which one are we going to go i was thinking hatfield, hatfield or redbourne or both? Yeah, I've been to Redbourne for a while. If that's I, need, on. I need to check if that's on. Yeah, yeah, if it's on, then we'll go. Um, Richard, sounds like my classic mini. Just use it for sunny days. Yeah, couldn't use it for my daily too slow up hills. We're still thinking about buying a new style mini. Yeah, we need to test drive it first because the amount of people that tell us it's like driving a go kart. <laughs> yeah not sure i'm tall and gangly so we're not sure how that's going to work mm -hmm. out because we kind of want a, sh a car that we both will enjoy driving and that we can kind of share mm -hmm. so we've met you know we'll see we need to go and test drive one see if i yes, can fit in it <laughs> um oh yeah graham was saying about ads yeah i didn't see any of that to be fair i don't know what happened um same happened to me my car cut out this is dave as I was overtaking three lorries in the middle lane, I had to roll over to hard shoulder once the lorries had to re-overtake, didn't crash as well, was lucky. Yeah. We were panicking. Right. Yeah. It's very, very scary. My Vauxhall Astra blew up on a dual carriageway, it scared the beep out of me, says Freckles. My um my first car, my Ford uh Mark One Escort, it the distributor pin and inside the distributor cap fell off and the AA guy said that never happens right but it fell off so I've got no power going because there's no power being distributed to the plugs and it happened on a roundabout of all the places where I could be it happened on a round busy one in yeah. Stevenage so I, I was just dead on a roundabout it was so embarrassing yeah, yeah. Um, Peter says I will watch uh, next Sunday, so it's moving live hangouts from Nerja in Spain as a way. Oh, wow, lovely. have fun! I can't wait for our holiday now. I'm itching for it. This hot weather has just made, made me want it even more. The, the cool thing about being on holiday when you've got hot weather is you can dive in the pool, you can go and paddle in the sea, go for a swim. Here, we just sweat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, especially in here at the moment, it's probably not coming across, but I am starting to just up again i'll shut that one day yeah but i think i think hot. i think creepy guy might have gone and have a look <laughs> yeah he's gone and but he's gone back in again now um well we're just kind of rambling now we can keep rambling yeah well um heather says that she harshly recommends a ford estate as they have a huge boot you've got a ford estate yeah we we have a ford focus estate which is my workhorse yeah, yeah. Best car I've ever had, to be honest. Most reliable thing I've ever had. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Can't knock Ford. Um, did I see a Depeche Mode question? Oh, and Jason says, um, I have a Mini One. It's great. I'm six foot one and have plenty of room, and you would be surprised what you can fit in them. Well, that's good. It's a positive yeah. endorsement. Okay, well, we're going to take one out. We'll, we'll try and do that next week. We'll I try, and, we yeah. try and do a vlog of it or something. 
Yeah. Um, that is good to know, actually. Oh, it's not a DM question. I've seen it now. The the person's name is DM, DM. and they've said question. Yeah, you just got that on your brain because we're going to go and see them on um, Saturday. Saturday, we're off to um, Olympic Stadium mm -hmm. to see the Pesh Mode. Kind of excited. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> but the DM question wasn't a DM question. No. It's just from DM. It says, "Hi Nick, what's the best way to clean old discolored Lego?" I I've never got involved in cleaning Lego. If it's you know dirty, it, it's not really worth my time. I think. So I tend to just pull it out, chuck it away, or or if you see a box and it and it looks filthy, I'd leave it. Yeah, that's only mine. I've heard of people. I'm sure put I've heard somewhere put it in the dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard that. But that seems like way too much of a palaver <laughs> to me. <laughs> Don't know. Um, let's see what else we've got. I'm getting addicted to reading questions in the chat now. We'll be here all night. Um, oh, that was Treasure Pirate that said that about yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Um, got a shelf full of Corinthian figures, can't give them away. Are they the little football guys? I bought a load of them a while back. Are they the ones with the big heads? Yeah, I think oh, that's right. what they are. Okay. Yeah, I had trouble selling them. I sold them, I just sold them as a job lot. I don't think I made a lot on them either. Yeah, Mark One Escorts are worth a lot of money now. Yeah. Mine was knackered. I, I paid £400 for it off my brother-in-law, had it for less than a year, and then it failed its MIT because it was completely rusted through in the bottom. And it was crap. It just wouldn't... It was one of those where in the winter you'd have to spray it with stuff to just get, get it started in the engine. Yeah. The Sip case said he's going for a smoke in five minutes. He'll tap on the window. <laughs> oh. I heard a creepy guy's coming back. Oh, that would freak us out if someone tapped on the oh, window. It really would. <laughs> Heather says, enjoy Depeche Mode. I saw Adamant a week ago. It was oh, utterly wonderful. Brilliant. He was epic. I loved Adamant when I was younger. I, I, watched really a, I watched a brilliant YouTube documentary about Adamant and his battles with, with depression mm. uh, and what he went through. And in some ways is still going through. Fascinating, fascinating chat yeah 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 um but yeah love adam and stuff um peter ray i'll be off soon to listen dvd box sets on ebay and the aa pub guide 2016 as well cool <laughs> that, there was talk about the aa pub guide oh was it so that's a reference to something else. uh joe um, says dirty legos just nasty you're right nick leave them behind yeah <laughs> It's a step too far, that one, for me. Yeah. And was that I, I L Matt says, um, right. speaking of Depeche Mode, Vince Clark and Alison Moyer are thinking about doing another Yazoo album. Oh, I've not heard that. Wow. That would be good. They didn't actually get on. Did they not? No. It's quite common no. knowledge. They, they didn't socialise. They didn't, quite often they didn't really record together. And... She was almost like a session singer for him. Mm. And then it took off. Nobody really expected they had this massive album and became international superstars. But they were kind of just like, they weren't really mates. They didn't socialize and stuff. Oh, oh, we've had a live sale. We've had a crappy day on eBay, I'll tell you that much. Oh, that's not a great sale either. <laughs> what was it? It's ball bearings for Mousetrap. <laughs> oh, at least he's bought five of them. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's an international sale, so it's... Where we saw some ball bearings. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, I didn't know they didn't get on. But they're obviously, you know, if, yeah, it's they, not, if they're thinking of um, working together again, then they must be quite friendly. Yeah, I would imagine that they've buried any hatchet they might have had. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you see that with a lot of the sort of 80s bands that they fell out or they didn't really like each other or whatever, but they're getting back together now. They're all best friends. It's, it's just being young and then maturing and, you know, yeah, and they want the money. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that would be great, though. I mean, I, I'm still a big Erasure fan. Uh, Vince Clark, of course, went on to form Erasure. Um, yeah, and was in Depeche Mode for the first album. Uh, Peter Ray, I will be seeing Enter Shikari and Don Broco 
in November at the Alexander mm -hmm. Palace. Can't Enter wait. Enter Shikari, our uh, local band to us. They're local to, I don't know and where they're they used from. to the wedding, I think. Yeah. I think I'm making that up, maybe. They're certainly but local. They, they used to play in our local music yeah, venue right, down they here. They did, and they did the um, Rhythms of the World Festival that we used to have every year. Yeah. Yeah. We actually sold some of their CDs in our shop, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. They, they've gone on to big things. Uh, Paul Mosley, I'm still hoping DM will do Glastonbury. I'm going in four weeks. But haven't they confirmed the lineup for that? I've certainly not heard that they're doing it. They're not really a festival band. It's not doesn't tend to be their thing, does it? No, but they're they're doing a lot of things they've not done before. So if they had, if they announced that in good time, I think that would be the year we go to Glastonbury. We have talked about it a little bit, haven't we? But yeah, never... if it's this year, no. But if oh. they that's what I'm saying. If they announced it in good oh, time in that good we could time, get yeah, tickets, you, can't, get tickets you can't get tickets now. But our sister's going to Glastonbury. They go most years. Um. Okay. Well, we should probably wrap this up because we we could just go on all night. Talking of um, gigs, though, we're we're taking um, two teenage girls to see Declan McKenna. Has anyone heard of him? This is where everybody <laughs> watching goes. Who? <laughs> Who's Declan McKenna? He's a nineteen-year-old up-and-coming sort of indie star. Well, I wind up. This is Ellen, our daughter, who's <laughs> fifteen, and she's she's really into lots of music, and this is her new thing. Yeah. So I've been winding her up by calling him Declan Donnelly. Oh, I said Paul McKenna. And Paul McKenna. <laughs> Paul McKenna's son. I do like to wind her up. So, yeah, we're going to Bedford, are we? Yeah, he played, um, what was it, the Radio 1 Big Weekend on the um, Introducing Stage, and we watched it on TV yesterday. I have to say it's not really my thing. But it was very, I don't know, it kind of reminded me a bit of the Libertines in the style of music. Okay. Yeah, maybe. That sort of stuff. So, yeah, we're but, taking yeah. Ellen and her friend to, to that. Yeah, he, he definitely had, um, you know, you could tell he really liked David Bowie because he had paint all over his face and all the glitter and stuff. And, yeah. yeah. So we're, do, we're doing that. When is that? A couple of weeks. Two weeks' time, yeah. Oh, right. So, we, so we're going to Depeche Mode next week. Yeah, and then a couple of weeks. What's his name again? Declan McKenna. Declan McKenna. One extreme to the other. It yeah. looks like a baby. In a, in a club that holds probably 50 <laughs> he's, people. He's only 19. He just looks like a baby. He's just... One extreme to the other. Um, okay, so UK reseller. So Zaheer is a moderator then. Yeah, Zaheer's got the little spannery thing. So he has the option of deleting comments if he needed to. Right. Okay, we'll wrap up there. We will. We've been waffling for yeah, and it has been waffled an hour, hour and a quarter, and shared nothing much really. Oh. But yeah, I'm going to carry on tonight, sorting out all these CDs into piles, sending off a few more boxes of crap to Magpie and Ziffit. Yeah, and tat, not crap. This is crap. <laughs> the, the, there was some god awful music in it, yeah. but some really nice gems. So all, we, all good. Anyway, thanks for putting up with us waffling. Um, I'll give you a up, quick update, see if Creepy Man's back. Yeah, it's okay out there. <laughs> no, no. He's not there. No. Thanks for being with us tonight. Um, if you enjoy these chats, please give us a thumbs up. It lets us know that you enjoy what we do and it's entertaining. We will be back on Tuesday. Um, do we have a guest? Is it guest week? No, we had Heather on, didn't we? Can I really quickly say something? What? Malinky just said, I once told Billy Ocean to get off the stage because I didn't recognise him. I just wanted to very quickly say that when my uh, when my granddad worked for um, CBS Records, he thought Sade was his new secretary. <laughs> oh, yeah, brilliant story. <laughs> so your grand yeah. so she turned up in his office. Yeah, and so he wanted to take notes. <laughs> your granddad also had some good stories who was who got really drunk he had, meatloaf he had carried meatloaf up the stairs to his hotel yeah. apartment or something i can yeah, believe that had, one yeah he had yeah. some really good really good stories yeah yeah anyway sorry <laughs> yeah that's andrew's granddad who sadly is no longer with us had a lot of cool stories from because he was a head of security at cbs records which was sony so yeah anyway we are going we are going, we are honest. going honest <laughs> thanks for thanks for stopping by. We'll be I'll be back on Tuesday with Zahir, uh, just me and Zahir because we had a guest on last week, and then we'll line somebody up for the week after that. I am going to be on Lonnie's uh, chat later on tonight. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll speak to you guys soon. Yeah, take care, guys. Bye. Bye.